Okay, let's get started. So sitting cross-legged or on your knees. And taking a moment to sit upright from the lower back, so tilting the pelvis forward slightly, drawing the low belly in, checking you've got that lumbar curve, lifting the chest, rolling your shoulders down and back. In fact, I invite you, if you have a free wall near you, to actually sit yourself on a support, but up against the wall just to um, have that feedback on your alignment. So your hips should be touching the wall, there should be a slight space at the lower back, the shoulders should be touching the wall and the back of the head should be touching the wall. But try to do this without actually Kind of really leaning on the wall but rather just using the the wall as a guidance for where your body is in space and then rest your hands gently on your legs and close your eyes inhaling rising up through the crown of the head and exhale allow the shoulders to drop down and back we do a quick body scan, scanning through the toes and the feet, the ankles up through the legs, the pelvis, feeling the sitting bones resting down, bringing the awareness up through the torso, the shoulders, hands and arms, and into the neck and the head, and inhaling, again rising up through the crown of the head, and exhaling, dropping the shoulders down and back. We'll take three deep, intentional breaths together, inhaling right down deep into the belly, really use the diaphragm. And exhale, feel the sitting bones drop down. Inhale into the side from the back of the rib cage. And exhale, relax the shoulders down and back. And one more time, inhale right down deep into the belly, out into the sides, the back of the rib cage, all the way up to the top of the lungs. And exhale, let it go. Let your day so far go. And then open your eyes, interlace your hands in front of you, take a breath in, and breathing out, push the palms away. So if you're using the wall here, the backs of your shoulders should still be touching the wall, but you're just pushing the arms, straightening up the arms away from that point. Take another breath in, draw the belly in, and again, using the wall as your guidance, you can really stabilize the pelvis, uh, sorry, stabilize the torso, as you move the arms up, making sure that the position of the torso stays exactly where it is. So really not going into a back bend to get the arms back. Then lift up out of the waist, lengthening the arms, keeping the breath flowing as you really stretch the sides of the body, squeeze the upper arms in towards your ears, Lengthen away with the heels of the hands and keeping the breath flowing smoothly in and out. And then release the arms, release the legs if you've got them crossed and cross them the other way. Again, sit upright from the lower back, so tilting the pelvis forwards. And, then, and if you are at the wall, really making sure that the uh, the tailbone is right by the wall. So almost kind of um, looking the tailbone up the wall a little bit to get that uh, forward pelvic tilt. Lifting the chest, finding the contact between back of the hips, back of the shoulders, slight space at the lower back, really lifting up out of the waist, relaxing the arms down. 
And then we go to the other side. So interlacing your hands the other way, take a breath in and then push palms away. Again, shoulders still touching, draw the belly in, inhale and exhale, slowly move the arms and the shoulder sockets, really stabilizing the position of the rest of the torso, perhaps finding that the arms go back a little more, bit more readily this time. And then lift up out the waist, lengthening the torso, stretching from hips to armpits to wrists, keep that belly drawing in, squeeze the upper arms towards each other, resist the way with the heels of the hands. Lift up a little more, and then slowly release the arms down, and make your way to a standing position. I also realized during the intro that I forgot to close the applications on my computer which make notification sounds. So we're going to do that so that we don't get disturbed at the end. Sorry about that. Okay. So come to the center of your mat. Bring your big toes together, start to bring the awareness down into the soles of the feet, spreading the toes out wide. Bring the body weight back slightly so that the hips are stacked over the heels. Engage the quadriceps, draw the belly in, lift the chest, and extend the fingertips down towards the floor. In mountain pose, feeling the lift, sense of lift all through the body. Lifting the inner arches, lifting the kneecaps, lifting the belly in and up, lifting the chest. I'm going to take the arms out to the side, turn them in the shoulder socket, and then bring the arms all the way up, lengthening out of the waist, biceps by the ears if possible, maintaining the alignment, body weight still back over the heels, kneecaps still lifted, squeezing the glutes a little bit, lift. The fingertips all the way up to the ceiling and then allow the arms to come down hands on hips bend your knees step or hop to a wide stride for your second warrior pose start with two heels in one line outside edges of the feet parallel bring the body weight back engage the body set lift the front of the pelvis draw the belly in lift the chest Turn the left foot in slightly and the right foot out. All the way, torso still facing the front, draw the elbows back. Inhale up out of the waist and exhale, sit down to the left. And then inhale back up and continue this with your own breath. Maintaining all the while your left leg really active, pushing that heel down, lifting the inner arch and keeping this quadricep really active. Right knee pushes out towards the little toe side of the foot, so don't let it fall in. You can have a look down to check that it's maintaining that alignment. Torso stays exactly above the hips, crown of the head rising up all the while, belly drawing in. And perhaps as you do this each time, going a millimeter lower as we warm up the hips and find a little bit more depth there. Okay, next time that you're at the top, pause. Inhale, outstretch the arms, extend, stretch across the front of the chest, draw the belly in again, lift the chest, and then exhale, sit down to the right. Again, take the mind to the back foot, push the heel down, engage the quadricep, and turn your head to look along your right arm. Have a little peek down, check that your knee is still pushing out towards the little toe side of the foot. Draw the belly in again, lift the chest, drop the shoulders down away from the ears, extend the arms as much as possible, long fingers, wide palms, take the mind to the back foot again, push that heel down, engage the quadricep, see if you can sit down just a little bit more, bending that right knee, keeping the breath flowing, gazing at a single point, and go on, sit down just one more time, and then turn your gaze to the front, straighten your right leg, Turn that foot round, relax your arms, body weight back over the heels, engage the quadriceps, lift the front of the pelvis, notice how you have to squeeze your glutes to do that, 
draw the belly in, hands on hips, elbows back, turn the right foot in slightly and the left foot out all the way, inside edge of the left foot parallel with the long edge of the mat, knee and foot facing the same direction, torso still facing the front, belly in and up, inhale lift the chest, exhale down and inhale up. Again, doing this with the rhythm of your own breath, making sure that the right leg now is really strong and engaged, pushing that heel down, engaging that quadricep, lifting, if you can, the inner arch of the foot. Having a look down at your left knee, checking it's pushing towards the little toe side of the foot so you can see your big toe past your knee. Keep the belly drawing in and the chest lifted, perhaps going a little bit more deeper as we work into that left hip. And next time you're at the top, pause there. Inhale, outstretch the arms, extend, mind to the back foot, push the heel down, engage the quadricep, and then sit down to the left and hold it. Turn your head to look with a long neck along your left arm. Mind again to the right foot, push the heel down one more, lift the inner arch, engage the quadricep. Draw the belly in, lift the chest and drop the shoulders down away from the ears. Extend through to the fingertips, long fingers, wide palms, soft gaze at a single point. Check your left knee is pushing out towards the little toe side of the foot and see if you can sit down a little bit more, keep that right leg really strong, draw the belly in again. And sit down one more time and then gaze to the front, straighten your left leg, turn the left foot round and come back to the centre, spread your toes, body weight back, lift the chest, extend the fingertips down towards the floor and breathe. Okay, extended side angle pose, hands on hips, bend your knees, step or hop, wide stride so that you can bend your knee to that right angle, push the heel down, engage the quadriceps, draw the belly in, hands on hips, elbows back really, open across the chest, and the left foot in slightly, and the right foot out all the way, inside edge of the right foot, parallel with the long edge of the mat, torso still facing as much as possible the front. Draw the belly in again, lift the chest, lifting up out the waist, really lengthen the torso as you do this and try and keep that length as you sit down to the right, if possible, finding again this 90 degree angle. Mind to the back foot, push that heel down, engage that quadricep, keep this left leg strong throughout the posture. Draw the belly in and start to lean over your uh, right leg. But before actually putting your elbow on there, just holding that position a little bit, seeing if you can start to make this shape without putting the arm down. And then finally put the arm, uh, right arm onto the right knee and use that elbow to draw the knee back towards the little toe side of the foot. Make sure you haven't collapsed here, so there should be this triangle of space between your thigh and your body and a nice space here between the shoulder and the ear. We're not kind of hanging out down there. Draw the belly in and start to turn the tummy and the torso up towards the ceiling. Take the top arm up and over and stretch again, bicep by the ear. Long fingers, wide palms, gaze forward or up towards the ceiling as you wish. If you want to bring those fingertips of the right hand down behind your ankle, you can do so, no weight through the fingertips, draw the belly in, turn the tummy in up again, extend through the top arm, and then keeping that right knee bent, holding it there, coming up through warrior two, and then straightening your right leg, turn the foot round, bring the hands to the hips, like you've still got two heels in one line, Body weight back over the heels, lift the front of the pelvis, giving the glutes a little squeeze. And then we're going to go to the other side. Turn the right foot in slightly, left foot out all the way, inside edge of the left foot, parallel with the long edge of the mat, torso still facing the front. Come on to the back foot, push the heel down, engage this quadricep, 
Inhale, lift up out the waist, keep that length, keep that long torso as you sit down to the left, pushing that left knee out towards the little toe side of the foot. And then again, drawing the belly in, start to lean the body over to this side, but with resisting the urge to put the weight of the torso onto that arm really see if you can keep that length in the torso again and then left elbow to left knee draw that knee back towards the little toe side of the foot draw the belly in turn the tummy and the chest up towards the ceiling opening the torso and taking that top arm up and over you can keep the gaze forwards or look up past your arm stretching those top fingers really lengthening the whole right side of the body draw the belly in again and if you wish to bring the fingertips down behind the left foot, if you've got your fingertips down, push the knee back into the elbow, keep the belly drawing in, turn the tummy and the chest up again, extend those top fingertips away, and then gaze to the front, keep the knee bent as you come up through warrior two, straighten the leg, turn the foot round, and come back to mountain pose. Spread your toes. Bring the body weight back, lift the chest and extend fingertips down towards the floor. All right, chair pose. Uh, bring your feet to a hip distance. I'm actually going to turn to the side so that you can see what I'm doing. You can continue to face the front, of course. Um, so, toes in, heels out so that the outside edges of the feet are parallel. You've got that slight internal rotation of the legs, body weight back over the heels, squeezing the glutes, drawing the belly in, lift the chest. Options with the arms, either hands on hips and drawing the elbows back, really keeping the front of the body open, or take the arms up by the ears, lift, sliding the shoulder blades up so that your uh, biceps come by your ears, really finding that lift and gluing then your uh, your biceps to your ears, really using those back muscles to keep the uh, torso lifted. Inhale, lift up out the waist and then exhale, sit down into your chair pose, keep the belly drawing in towards the spine, keep the chest lifted, keep the arms up so they're not drooping down here, they are in contact with your ears. Keep the breath flowing as you sit down a little bit more, draw the belly in more, lift the chest more. And then from here, rise up onto your toes, gazing at a single point, keeping the breath flowing. Can you sit down a little bit more from there? Can you lift the chest more from there? And then if you can, rise up to standing and then with control, I didn't quite manage it with control, bring the heels down. Okay, same thing, feet together, big toes together, spread the toes, body weight back over the heels, squeeze the glutes, draw the belly in, lift the chest, choose your arms, either hands on hips, elbows back, or bring them up by the ears, lift, glue your shoulders to your ears as you lift up out of the waist, and then exhale, sitting down into your chair pose, with your knees together this time. Draw the belly in, sit down a little bit more, lift the chest, draw the arms back, gaze at a single point, and then rise up onto your tippy toes, really pushing those heels forward, drawing the belly in, extending through to the fingertips. And you sit down a little bit more, keeping the breath flowing. And then if you can, rising up onto the tip coat, standing up, and then with control, letting the heel come down and the arms come down. Find mountain pose, spread your toes, body weight back over the heels, lift the chest, and extend the fingertips down towards the floor and breathe. Okay. Um, Hands on hips, step or we'll hop the feet to a medium stride for our 
warrior one into three. So we turn all the way to the side. So pick up the left toes, turn them in, pick up the left heel, turn it out, push that heel down, start to maybe feel a stretch already down your uh, left calf, or maybe not. Maybe it's just me with very tight calves. Um, and engage this quadricep, anchor that foot down as you turn your uh, right foot round all the way. Heels of the hands onto the hip points as you square your hips with the side of the room. Starting to squeeze the inner thighs together and really activating now through this left glute. So push, squeeze the left glutes, feel how it pushes the tailbone down, lengthening here through the lower back. Draw the belly in, inhale the arms up above the head, lift, glue your biceps to your ears, and then keeping that length in the torso, bending now your right knee as much as you can without losing the contact of that back foot on the floor. Again, find that action of squeezing the inner thighs together even though they're not touching. Back leg is really strong, push the heel down, engage the quadriceps. Squeeze your right glutes and the tailbone down as you lift the front of the pelvis up. Lift up out of the waist, can you lengthen the torso anymore? From here, you can hold it here or go into a back bend. Lifting up before allowing the fingers to start to trace along the ceiling. As you do this, squeeze your right glute, really active through the glute as you go into the back bend, lengthen the lower back, keeping the breath flowing. Can you bend your front knee a little bit more? Can you squeeze your right glute anymore? And then bring your spine to neutral, straighten your right leg. Take a moment here and then we're gonna go into warrior three. Draw your belly in, rebend to the right knee, Start to lean forwards over that right leg, transferring the weight and lifting the left leg up behind you. Bring your hands onto your hips and just use your hands to feel your pelvis in space and notice how much you need to bring your um, left hip down. I mean left hip, yeah, your left hip down towards the floor to try and square your pelvis. There. And as you do that, as you start to bring that right hip down, you should feel the left hip glute need having to switch on to support the position even more. Draw the belly in, lift the right leg up a little bit more as you bring the body down more, keeping the breath flowing, lengthening the torso away. And then with control, come back, land in your warrior one position, straighten your right leg, face the front, no, don't step your feet back together. Keep your feet apart for the other side. Bring the body weight back over the heels. Hands onto the hips. Check you've got two heels in one line. And then we're going to pick up the right toes and turn them in. And the heel, turn it out. Finding that uh, aggressively inward turned foot. Push that heel down. Maybe do a stretch in the calf. Engage this quadricep. And then turn the left foot out all the way. Heels of the hands on the hip bones, turning to the side, squeezing the inner thighs the butt together. And now it's that right glute that's got to squeeze as hard as it can to send that tailbone down. As you do that, as you start to squeeze with the uh, right glute, check that that's not then going to throw your alignment off. So can you squeeze the right glute while maintaining the hips facing exactly forward. Push the right heel down again. Again, just engage this quadricep, draw the belly in. Inhale the arms up. Uh, biceps to ears, lengthen. Really squeezing the belly in. And then bend your left knee as much as you can without the right heel coming up. Keep the belly drawing in, right glute squeezing down, lengthening down again, lifting up out of the waist. Either hold it here or you can take it into a back bend, lifting up before you go back, creeping the fingertips along the ceiling, squeeze that right glute again, lengthening the lower back, bending the front knee a little bit more if you can, keeping the breath flowing. And 
and then come back to a neutral position. Ready for warrior three. Bending your front knee, really draw the belly in as you lay your body forwards over the front leg. Lift your right leg up and back, bring your hands onto your hips. And again, start to feel the pelvis in space. So you're trying to, as much as possible, make the back of the pelvis parallel with the floor. So that means bringing your right hip down. As you bring that right hip down, you're gonna feel left glute need fire even more, trying to stabilize that position, draw the belly in, lift the right leg up a little bit more, right leg straight if possible, left leg can be a little bit bent if necessary, lengthen the torso away, keeping the belly drawing in, body down a little bit more, leg up a little bit more, left toes pointing right down towards the floor, bring that, uh, sorry, right toes, bring that right hip down a little bit more, and then with control, come back down to warrior one, straighten your front leg, and bring the feet round, step your feet together, body weight back, chest lifted, and extend the fingertips down towards the floor, and breathe, inhaling, lifting up out of the waist, and exhale, Again, extending those fingertips down. Okay, come to uh, the top edge of your mat and bring your feet in parallel, hip distance, body weight back over the heels, lifting up out of the waist. We'll do a few uh, little in and out of the forward bends. So again, you've got choices here with the hands. You can bring the hands onto the uh, hips or bring them up if you want to challenge yourself a little bit more. I want you to really exaggerate the kind of staying in a back bend, staying in extension here. So whichever position you're in, lift up out of the waist and then tip the chest back a little bit. Like find yourself in a little bit of a back bend and then really maintaining that length of the front of the body, start to come forwards. Imagine you're trying to reach for something that's far away from you, once you're closer to the wall, and then inhale up. I'm just going to step back a little bit. So we're going to inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, exhale down. So doing this with the rhythm of your own breath, you might want to move your hands to your lower back to feel that, it remains in a concave position. You are isolating the movement in the pelvis. The whole torso remains in a slight back bend. So you can exaggerate that back bend if you really want to challenge yourself. And we're using here the glutes and the hamstrings to lift the body up. So actively engage those glutes, squeezing as you lift, keeping the belly drawing in keeping this long front body. So as if you're drawing your sternum, your breastbone forwards, joining with the arms. If your arms are up by your ears, again, gluing the biceps to the ears, not allowing them to droop down, using the back muscles to support that weight. And then next time you're at the top, bring the arms down and step your feet together, find mountain pose for a moment, body weight back, chest lifted and breathe. Okay, so we're going to do some of the balancing lunges um, but let's, okay, so we're going to do the balance lunges but we're going to add um, warrior three into the mix just to make it a little bit more difficult. Um, and while we're doing this, I want you to focus as much as possible on maintaining that pelvic alignment. So obviously when we do come onto one leg, there is always going to be that transfer of weight to one side. But um, as you lift, 
really trying not to allow this um, lift your leg hip either to come up or down loads. Maintain that alignment. Um, and then just to briefly show you what we're going to do. So we're going to go from here into warrior three. And then we're going to go down, nearly fell over, into a lunge, dipping that back knee. We're going to come back into warrior three and then without touching the floor if possible back into the balance if you need to tap your toe down of course do that okay so let's um go to the left leg just so that i'm not doing the same leg again so lift your left knee up in line with your hip uh, 45 degree angle Take the mind to the ball of the big toe joint of the right foot and push that ball of the big toe joint down. That's really your anchor now. And with the hands on the hips, just feel where your pelvis is in space. Maybe you need to drop that left hip down a little bit, draw the belly in and lift up out of the waist. Okay, from here, we're gonna, we'll keep the hands on the hips. We're gonna bring that uh, left leg back behind us and the body down into your warrior three position. How are your hips doing? Can you bring that left hip down a little bit more? Find the alignment of the pelvis, keep the belly drawing in, lift the chest, lengthening the torso away, gazing at a single point, and then you're gonna bring that uh, left leg back behind you into a lunge. Again, where is your pelvis? So you can bring the heels of the hands to the points of the hips. See if you're still, if your headlights are facing in the right direction. Find a little bit of that inner thigh squeeze and then maintaining that alignment as you dip the left knee down and up. Still got hands on hips, draw the belly in, body forwards over that front leg. Come again to your warrior three, extending the uh, chest forwards, and then stand up, finding that balance. Again, trying to right the pelvis as much as possible, and as you do so, feeling that uh, right glute need working, and then bring that foot down. Okay, other side. So lift the right leg up now, 90 degrees, draw the belly in. See if you can really square the pelvis. Mind to the ball of the big toe joint of the left foot, push that ball of the big toe joint down, drawing the belly in, lifting the chest. Then we're gonna to start to tip the body forward into our warrior three, lifting the right leg up behind us. Right hip down, using your hands to feel your pelvis in space, trying to get your pelvis to be parallel with the floor, drawing the belly in, lift that leg up a little bit more, keep the breath flowing, right hip down more, extend the chest forward, and then bring the right leg down, find yourself in a high lunge. Again, heels of the hands on the hip points, bring your hips square, just giving the glutes a little bit of a squeeze and then maintaining that alignment of the pelvis, bending, dipping the right knee down and up and then we're going to come forwards again into warrior three. Notice that pelvis instantly wants to hit, bring the Right hip down, draw the belly in, extend the chest bone away, and then coming up and through without bringing the foot down if possible, back to your balancing position, and then bring that right foot down. Okay, one more time, each side. And just maintaining the, um, the hands on the pelvis, really just as we go into each movement, just trying to find, either with your hands on your back or here, that uh, straight pelvis position. 
and that's not because we like want to be like a protractor alignment thing but just because to maintain alignment in a one-legged position is just recruiting much more muscles of your core because your body wants to counterbalance by pushing to one side so if you are forcing yourself to stay in alignment on one leg it's just going to make all those supportive muscles much stronger um, so transfer your weight to your right foot lift the left leg up and again feel your pelvis in space really stabilize here all of the big toe joint of the right foot, push it down, engage that quadricep, draw the belly in, lift up out of the waist and see if you can keep that length in the front of your body as you pivot forwards to your warrior three. Okay, hands on the, on the low back, find that alignment, bringing the left hip down a little bit more as you lift the left heel up, toes are pointing straight down towards the floor, belly in, extend the torso, keeping the long front body and the breath flowing. And then bringing that foot down behind you into your lunge. Squeeze the inner thighs, finding again the straight pelvis, drawing the belly in, dip the left knee down and up. Start to lean forwards, find warrior three again, left hip down, extending the front of the body, left heel up, keep the breath flowing, and then if possible, coming up without bringing that toe down, maintaining that alignment of your pelvis, lifting up out of the waist, and then bringing that right foot down, with the left foot a little shake and we'll go to the other side transfer the weight to the left foot pushing the ball of the big toe joint down engaging that quadricep as you lift the right leg up hands are on hips finding that pelvic alignment lift up out of the waist keep that length in the front of your body as you start to pivot forwards can you maintain the alignment as you transition into Warrior three, bring that right hip down now, right heel up, toes pointing straight down to the floor, belly in, extend the torso away, keeping the breath flowing. And then with control, landing in a high lunge. Heels of the hands on the front of the pelvis, squeeze the inner thighs together, find that alignment. Keep the chest lifted, keep the torso tall as you dip your right knee down and up and you maintain that alignment. Draw the belly in, start to lean over that front leg, hands are on hips. Find that alignment as you come down into warrior three, lift the heel up, draw the belly in, hip down. Keep the breath flowing and then without touching the floor, and you come back to your final position, final bit of uh, stability in the hips, and then bring that leg down. A little shake off if you need to, and then feet in parallel. Have a generous hip distance, toes in, heels out, lift up out of the waist, hands on hips, draw the elbows back, Lengthen the front of the body, go into a little bit of a back bend here, exaggerate it as you come forwards, maintaining that back bend. So, you can see here, big concave in my back. Check out your own lower back, make sure that you haven't gone into this position. So, really working to find the movement in the hips, training your body to move from that position so that you maintain. A neutral spine drawing the belly in lift the chest a little bit more imagine something's drawing your breastbone forwards engage your quadriceps again belly in again elbows back more open across the chest draw the head back a little bit in space and then maybe come down a millimeter more and then we can really come down no more without losing 
your concave lower back. Bend your knees as much as you need to, as if you're going to sit down. Lay your stomach on your thighs and allow the upper body to relax down towards the floor. Crown of the head going down, bending the knees as much as you need to to find a comfortable position that you can have your stomach on your thighs, your chest on the knees. You can really bend your knees a lot here if you need to. Give the head a little bit of a shake and a nod just to loosen up through the neck. Keeping the breath flowing. And then bring the gaze forward, bend the knees a lot and step or hop back to your first plank position. Really pushing the floor away. Strong arms, points the elbows turning back towards your body. Uh, all of the first joint of the first joint. Uh, what I mean, all of like the pointer finger, push that down so that first knuckle, don't let it come up. As you're turning the elbows back towards you, breathe, doming the upper back, pushing the floor away as much as possible. Draw your head back in space, draw the belly in, squeeze the glute, keep the breath flowing. Nice strong position here. And then push back into your first downward dog position again. Keep the knees bent, heels up. You can walk the knees out a little bit if that feels good. Push the floor away with the hands, really lengthening the arms, pushing the body weight back towards the feet, turning the tailbone up towards the ceiling. Now relax the head. So there can be a tendency to kind of keep some tension in the head, but just allow the head to come down, relaxing towards the floor. And then bring the knees down, knees wide, toes together, and relax back onto your heels, forehead on the floor, or stack the hands if you need to. Take some deep breaths into the lower back. And then draw the belly in and come to a kneeling position and um, we're going to do again our little flow uh, of plank chaturanga up dog down dog um, but I just want to feel free to go straight in if you're like I don't want to listen to you talk fine um, but I want to show you again I have done this before but the kind of rippling of the back um from from down dog to plank sorry buffering um so obviously with the when we go from chaturanga to up dog we have that sort of movement into a back bend um but with the down dog to plank i want you to try and get a ripple that goes that takes your back into flexion from the lower back to the upper back don't worry if it feels impossible, but if you're interested and you want to have a look before you go in, then I'll do that now. Otherwise, feel free to go straight in if you just want to do your flow. So essentially what I'm talking about is that from your downward dog, you're going to start to tuck the tailbone, rolling through the back and come to a plank like this. So rather than just kind of hinging at the shoulders and the hips, you're trying to get this rolling movement as you're coming through and then you will continue the sequence. Okay, so let's go in together if you haven't already. Uh, knees underneath the hips, make sure you have a decent amount of space in your tabletop position because a long double dog is going to be more comfortable. Spread the fingers nice and wide, push the base of the first knuckle down, push the floor away, turn the points of your elbows back towards your belly. Body? Body. Draw the belly in, draw the head away from the floor a little bit, use those deep neck flexors, tuck the toes under, drop the hips back towards the heels, start to push through the arms, relax the head, take a breath in, and exhale, lifting up into your downward dog position, really active through the arms, 
and then if you want to do the kind of back ripple start to really drill the belly in turn the tailbone down towards the floor rolling through mid back and upper back coming to a quite domed plank position squeezing the glutes squeezing the belly in really strong through the whole core here engaging the quadriceps as well and then keeping all that engagement elbows in tight as you come down through your chaturanga squeeze your glutes even more draw your belly in and then keep that engagement through the glutes as you come to up dog so the more you squeeze your glutes here the more you're going to lengthen the lower back so really squeezing the tailbone down push the floor away shoulders away from the ears long neck so the back bend here is in the hips really you're doing a hip extension more than a back bend so and the glutes will facilitate that really squeeze the glutes a little bit more before pushing back to your downward dog position push the floor away relax the head turn the tailbone up towards the ceiling and we go again and we'll do it uh, going a little bit quicker with the breath and if you want to try and do that back ripple then you can drawing the belly in rolling forwards into your plank exhaling down towards your chaturanga inhaling to up dog squeezing those glutes shoulders away from the ears exhaling to down dog and again inhaling to plank Exhaling to Chaturanga, inhaling to Up Dog, exhaling to Down Dog. Doing this with the rhythm of your breath, elbows in tight in Chaturanga, squeezing the glutes in Up Dog, pushing the floor away in Down Dog. And then next time you're in your Downward Dog, Hold it there, push the floor away, turn the tailbone up towards the ceiling, relax the head, and then bring the knees down, toes together, and relax the forehead down, breathing into the back. And then draw your belly in and just um, come back up to kneeling again. Give the wrists a little bit of a roll out. I've been doing quite a lot on the wrists. And we're going to do some more. So come to your uh, all fours position. Have your knees. Um, directly underneath your pelvis, spread the fingers, find it strong, um, all fours, really draw the belly in, and then take the, the, the right heel up towards the bum and squeeze that heel in towards the bum. How close can you get your heel to your glute? And then maintaining that, draw the belly in, stabilize the pelvis as you lift the leg up as much as possible but without going into lumbar lordosis so keep the belly drawing in keeping that pelvis stable can you lift that knee up a little bit higher can you squeeze your heel closer to your hip keeping everything in line maintain that pelvic alignment as you draw that knee in towards your chest don't allow the back to round now really just find the movement in the hip socket and then all the way back and then we're going to go take the leg into external rotation so start to tip the knee out towards the side and again maintain that pelvic stability as you bring it in the biggest circle as you can and then reverse out to the side again bring it back to neutral and that knee, bring that knee down come off the wrist give them a little bit of love Go to the other side, push the floor away, belly in, draw the head back away from the floor, 
bend your left knee, squeeze as much as possible. How close is your heel to your bum? Can it get any closer? Use those hamstrings, draw the belly in, stabilize the pelvis as you then lift the uh, hip up as much as possible. Make sure you're not going into a back bend here. So nothing should have moved apart from your leg. Squeeze that heel in even more. Push the floor away. Make sure that you still have that alignment and then holding everything there bringing the knee in towards the chest. Do not allow your pelvis to move. Do not round your back. Bringing the knee in as much as possible as you can without moving anything else. And then back up as much as you can. Do not go into a back bend. Keep that belly squeezing. And then turn the leg out towards the side and start to draw the biggest circle that you can all the way around. And then back again, really stabilizing. Bringing it back to neutral, give that heel a final squeeze to your bum towards more good measure. And then bring the knee down, knees together this time. Drop back again into a child's pose. You can bring the hands down by the sides of your body. Relax the shoulders down towards the floor. And then draw your belly in and start to reset through the spine. Head comes up last. Roll the shoulders back. Just do a little bit of a chest stretch as well. So um, point your hands away from you. You can either slide your hands like this or bring the hands down flat onto the floor. And then Really lift the chest up to go into a back bend and bend the elbows down a little bit towards the floor, really stretching across the front of the chest here. If it feels good, you can drop the head back completely or you can keep the chin tucked if that feels better to you. Bending the elbows a little bit more, finding that opening across the chest. And then if you put your head dropped back, Bring the head up slowly first, chin towards the chest, and then bring the rest of your body up. And then we will come over onto our backs. Lay yourself down. Let's give the knees a little bit of a hug in towards the chest. Keeping the tailbone down, you can do a little roll from side to side, uh, just massaging across the lower back. Rolling a little bit more if you feel like it, finding that edge of how far can you roll without completely tipping over. Or maybe you are completely tipping over, that is also fine. Just using those core muscles to find that edge. And then coming back to center as we prepare for Shavasana. So lift the chest and draw the shoulder blades down underneath you. Lengthen the lower back a little bit before allowing your legs to stretch out and feet to fall out towards the sides. Make any final adjustments so that you can be comfortable for the next few minutes as we rest in Shavasana. Allowing the body to be supported by the floor. Allowing the muscles to relax and allowing for the bones to become heavy and sink down into the earth. And bring your awareness into your toes and your feet, relax them. And bring the awareness into the ankles, the knees and the thighs. Relaxing the pelvis. The 
relaxing the lower back, middle back, and upper back. The abdomen, navel, and chest. Everything broad, soft. Relaxing the shoulders and the arms, the wrists and the hands. And then bringing your awareness into your neck and head. Noticing if you're still carrying any tension in the jaw, the forehead, around the eyes. And just softening, relaxing the jaw, the lips. Relaxing the eyes, the eyelids, eyebrows, and forehead. Everything softening, broadening. Relaxing down towards the earth. Feel the weight of your body. Resting. And then bring your awareness to your breathing. Noticing the rise and fall of the abdomen, the chest. Becoming shallower, softer, as your body requires less. Noticing any movements in the body. Perhaps noticing your heart rate. Noticing any other internal sensations. You're welcome to stay here for longer if you wish to. But if you're ready to move, we start breathing a little deeper again, taking some big belly breaths. And then starting to move the fingers and the toes, noticing what it feels like to stretch out the hands and feet. Maybe doing some circles with the ankles, starting to move the legs. If you want to stretch your arms up above you, lengthening the whole body. You can do so, and then slowly, when you're ready, make your way back to a seated position. Sit cross-legged or on your knees. Sitting up straight one last time. Taking up your full height, rising up through the crown of the head, lifting the chest, relaxing the shoulders down. And if you want to bring your hands to your prayer position, Namaskar, resting the thumbs on the sternum, stretching the fingers wide, gentle pressure the palms, still relaxing the shoulders down, and then bow your chin towards your chest, take a moment to close the practice, however feels right for you, and then raise your head, and open your eyes. Namaste, thank you very much everyone for joining me, um, I'm here if you want to have a chat or you have any questions, um, but otherwise if you need to switch off, that 